Ooh, there we are. Got one right away. All right, so this video, we are gonna be showing how to go out and catch fish around docks with shrimp. This is first cast. It was in the water for a very, very short time. And this is a weedless shrimp rig. Very, very important because we want to get down there in the structure, right? These grouper, sheep's head, snapper, they're going to be living in the structure. Let's let that guy go. And so the trick is to get a rig where you can get your shrimp down there in the structure. And this does an extremely good job. So you can see it's a bullet weight. It's a J hook. This is just an Eagle Claw, very plain, plain uh, hook. This is actually one of the most inexpensive hooks out there. And I'll show you how to rig it. So just get a shrimp out of here. This guy jumped out nice and lively. All right, so the trick is to rig it like a, like a worm, like a Texas rigged worm. So we pinch off the tail. And we're gonna go in through the back. And so we go in just to get a little bit of meat, get about a quarter inch of meat. Let me get a better grip on them. Quarter inch of meat, take it out the bottom. And then we're gonna thread it up thread it up and now we're going to put the hook inside the belly and we're going to keep it inside the shrimp. So the hook point is not poking out of the shrimp. The hook point is underneath the shell. That way no matter what happens you literally cannot get snagged on the bottom with this shrimp. As long as that hook doesn't penetrate through you're not going to get snagged. The weight's not going to get snagged because it's a, a bullet weight so you're not going to get snagged. As long as everything stays streamlined you're not going to snag. You can get down there get the shrimp right up against the pilings, bounce around them, go through rocks. And then as soon as the strike happens, then you set the hook and that's when the, the hook point will go through. So shockingly simple uh, rig that works very, very good. And this is probably the most inexpensive rig you can possibly get for doing this type of fishing. So let's see what it'll catch. All right, so as far as fishing it, all the key is just to get this shrimp on the bottom right next to the pilings. In this case, we have a current that's going towards the dock. It's very light current. And you don't even have to cast in many cases. You can just pitch it out there. And so I pitched it out about a foot short of the piling. And by the time it gets to the bottom, it's going to be right down there next to it. And so I let it just sit for a little bit and then just kind of feel for strikes. And you'll feel the difference. There'll be a lot. Oh, there we are. There's going to be, whoa, whoa. It's a decent fish. There's going to be a lot of pinfish that I'll be messing with you. Uh, there'll be a lot of pinfish messing with another grouper. All right. So... In fact, there's grouper, that means there's probably some structure down there. I've actually never fished this dock before. <laughs> and, uh, and so usually when you start getting multiple grouper like that, that means there's gonna be a lot of fish. Whoop, there we are, quick release. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position myself, just wanna make sure I don't spook these fish. We're just gonna position the boat so that we can get a few more casts up in there and, uh, and just see what we can pull out. Usually if there's grouper, there's gonna be sheep's head, there's gonna be a mangrove snapper, there's gonna be all sorts of fish. And the cool thing about these shrimp is that they will catch every single one of them. So this is a great type of fishing to do if you have kids out, taking somebody new, new to fishing. Um, because again, it's easy and everything, everything will eat it. All right, another one rigged and ready. And we will get up there close to this dock again. As I said before, you can get up pretty close. Um, so I'm probably like 30 feet out right now. We actually have pelicans diving under that dock. That is a very good sign. Um, and so all I can do is just do a little, little pitch, right? Just kind of underhand it. Doesn't have to be perfect. Again, we know the current's gonna take it towards the dock. So I'm letting it just float, float on down. Oh, there, oh man, I just missed one. Letting it float on down. Let's see if that shrimp's still on there. If it is, you'll get a strike really quick. If not, oops, someone's messing with me. Ah, probably a little tiny piece. Yeah, so a little tiny piece left. So this still will work, but check it out. All right, so after that miss, I'll put it against my jacket so you can see now the hook point's exposed. Now I'm no longer weedless. So to keep the weedless nature, I'll just go and kind of redo it. All right, move it up and just go down a little bit further over. Now you're protected under that shell. Now you can get up there and be weedless again. As soon as you, as soon as you have that hook point exposed, you are gonna significantly increase the odds of getting snagged. All right, so as far as how to, 
how to feel for strikes is it's all about feeling for the taps versus the thumps. If you can identify those, this is where it helps to have a, a quality quality rod and use definitely use braid line. Oh, there we are. So you're feeling the smaller fish will be tapping at it. Whoa, we're going around this pylon. Smaller fish will be tapping at it. And the larger fish will do a thump. And the, you'll feel a thump and then you'll feel some weight on the line. So this is a keeper snapper. So we caught the grouper. Now we're getting some snapper. There's surely some sheep's head down there too. All right, so there we just caught a keeper snapper. Small guy, but, uh, but a keeper. And, uh, and again, just a testament to just this thing will catch whatever fish is down there. Everything eats shrimp. And so now we have some tasty little meal for tonight. All right, so we've moved down to the next stock. You know, so after a while, the fish will get smart and stop biting. And so when that happens, just go down to the next stock. This is, it's very helpful to have a trolling motor. Um, that way you can just quickly and efficiently move around and, uh, and go from one dock to the other. Um, otherwise, you can anchor down. All right, worst case is anchor down and just uh, you know pull up anchor and move to the next one. But yeah, what we are gonna do is just fish all these pilings. Is just kind of go around and fish these pilings. Again, we can we can cast pretty aggressively because we have this wheel of shrimp, so I'll get a cast a little bit further up into these pilings. All right, so now I can fish this three pilings deep that I cast it up under that dock. And uh, and so I just feel them for taps, right? Feel or sorry, feel them for thumps. The taps are going to happen. There's a little small pinfish and stuff down there, messing with it. And we just wanted to uh, identify those thumps, and that is when we set the hook. So now I didn't catch any on those pilings. Now we'll go over dead ahead of the boat and fish those. Same thing. You can almost work it. This is slower, way slower than you would work an artificial, like an actual artificial lure. But you don't have to just have it sit there and wait, right? If usually if there's something there, it's going to bite it pretty quickly. All right, so I just missed the fish. I'm re-rigging it, make sure that it's still weedless, and now I'm gonna get it right back where I dismissed that thing. And it was right down there under the dock. Doing some close quarter fishing here. Wind got me a little bit closer than I generally like to get. Yeah, in many cases, you can, uh, you can even fish these, these pilings out here. This is just a cluster of three. You don't have to have docks over them. A lot of times, especially after cold fronts like what we're dealing with now, the fish like to get in deeper water. Or as far as as far as determining what docks to fish, this is a good thing to look for. We have a low tide, but you can see all these, all these oysters and stuff, all these little clumps on these pilings. So I'm uh, just fishing those two right there, but look at this dock up ahead. You can see a lot of oysters sticking off of them. That means that's just gonna be a lot of structure, a lot of, uh, especially for sheep's head, right? Sheep's head love eating those things. And, uh, and just, just there's gonna be a lot of just just things for these fish to eat and so oh, the more the better i think i was messing with the troll motor and i missed the fish so i got a little chunk still left let's see if you can hit it again felt like a decent fish um so it's all about just we're gonna just go slow in this spot this looks really good so we're gonna go oh i'm feeling some taps feeling some taps let's see if we can get them you can feel that thump you can feel when they grab it that's just something really small. So that's probably some pinfish. So I'm not going to bother even set the hook. Let's just go ahead and rebait. That way we can, we can fish these pilings and hopefully get a bigger fish. All right, so we'll fish this next piling. It's just a single piling out there, but it has all those little clumps on it, bunch of little oysters. So have to fish that one. And I'm just taking it right down by the base. Okay, so I'm feeling some little thumps. Or sorry, I'm feeling the taps. I'm waiting on that thump. See that rod tip is barely moving. It's a very sensitive line. All right, we'll try the other side of it. Sometimes those sheep's head are just have their face just right on, right on one side and won't see it. Get the cast out. The same thing, right? We're just gonna drag it right up along the piling. There we are. Oh man, that was a bigger fish. All right, so just missed one. That was a good fish. No idea what it was, so we'll get another bait down there and see if either he or one of his buddies will eat. All right, so just missed a nice fish, and we're gonna get down there. Get down there, same exact spot, right in between that dock, those dock pilings, and let's see if he'll come and eat it again or at least one of his buddies. Usually when there's one, there's more than one. 
but that was a nice fish. I felt a good little thump and there was whaling line that felt more like a sheep's head. Sheep's head are a bit tougher to hook, but usually once you get them hooked, you've got them. So that one, I just didn't get that hook point in. Something messed with me, but there's structure down there. So that's a really good thing. You always want to be feeling for structure. So guys, I'm just slowly dragging and I can feel it just bumping up against some stuff. All right, so we're going to buzz this piling, this outside piling right there. So something on the bottom I just felt, that's a good sign. So I want to keep it down there right in the strike zone, just feeling for signs of a thump. All right, there are the taps starting. See if a bigger fish gets attracted to it or not. Oh, that felt like a good one. Yep, there we are. There we are, yep, just waiting for that thump. This looks like a nice, oh, I thought it was a nice snapper, another little grouper. But yeah, that's the key, is just make sure you're feeling, you're feeling for those, those hits. No telling, there's probably, probably 10 pinfish messing with this thing. And then uh, that attracted some, some uh, bigger predators to come in. It turned out to be a grouper in this case, but caught, caught all sorts of snapper, sheep's head, even snook, redfish, trout. They all get attracted to that commotion. And as long as you are, are just don't set it too early, most people, the biggest mistake, people feel that tap and set the hook. Oh, I just heard a dolphin come up. But people, uh, you know, feel, uh, feel those taps and set the hook and then the game over. It spooks everything off. The key is just to keep it down there. Tap, 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 let it sit, thump. That's when you wait to feel the weight and then set the hook. All right, so we're gonna get down there again. Usually when there's one grouper, that's a sign of structure on the bottom. And in general, when there's structure on the bottom, there's gonna be more more than just that one grouper. So we're gonna fish this a little bit slower. And let's see what else we can pull out of there. Really like to get a nice sheep's head. All right, yeah, so I'm feeling that structure down there. There's some, definitely something on the bottom. Yeah, and so for this type of fishing, it's, it's very helpful to have some, uh, you know, braid line I mentioned before, but even light, like I still use 10 pound braid for this. That way you can just cuts through the water better. Um, if you are targeting bigger fish, you'll need to bump it up, obviously. So if I hook into a, you know, a, a big red or snook, I'm gonna have a hard time getting it out of there. But for just sheep's head and mangrove snapper, this, uh, this gets the job done. And I'm just using a 20 pound, as far as leader line, just 20 pound mono leader, just Andy mono. I feel like the, uh, the mono seems to do a better job on, uh, on not getting broken off around this hard structure than, than fluorocarbon. So I'm just, I'm just buzzing right down this line of pilings. I should be getting a strike here pretty soon. I'm feeling some taps, but no thumps. Yeah, so when fishing these docks, I'm going up to another one. So having a trolling motor is very helpful. We, we have a trolling motor. This is, this is a, a game changer, but without a trolling motor, still okay, right? If you use an anchor, you can just anchor down. Um, but, but I like to target the outside pilings. So I actually caught some surprisingly good fish just on these outside pilings with no dock structure. And, uh, and so I, I, I do those first, generally, especially if they have a bunch of barnacles, like this one. See that pile is just loaded with barnacles. And uh, that's great for sheep's head. It's really just good for, you know, everything. Anything, you know, brand new, if it's a brand new dock, I don't get quite as excited about it. But if it's a dock like this, with these pilings have all sorts of barnacles on there. We have these in, in the deeper water, obviously. And the fact that we just had a cold front come through, this, the deeper, water probably has the best odds of the bigger fish, but uh, you never really know, right? It's really just about, about structure, about finding areas with some structure. Oop, there's some taps, taps, waiting on that thump. You can see that rod tip dancing a little bit. It just feels like small stuff. And now, I f ooh, I felt weight. That was a better fish. Now it's letting go. Let's see, let's see if that big one will come back. I was messing with the troll motor and missed my opportunity. So yeah, I've definitely, um, when the fishing slow, oh, there we are. Oh man, that was a that was a better one. So when the fishing slow like this, um, sometimes you don't get a ton of opportunities. But uh, just having this live shrimp and doing this, getting this live shrimp right down there, near the uh, the pilings, is just going to increase the odds. There we are. There we are. Right next to that piling, felt uh, yeah, it was felt weight. This is a surprisingly small fish. But when those when the fish grabs it and starts moving, it just feels like weight on the water. In this case, it's a pinfish. This has been a multi-species trip, as it pretty much always is when you're fishing shrimp near dock pilings. Can even get our shrimp out of his mouth. 
So there you are, chunky little uh, little pinfish. Let's let him back, back for action. Now we can even reuse this bait. So even these small chunks work, right? Especially if you don't want to take a kid out, get a smaller hook and, and use the little small chunks and you can catch an absolute ton of fish doing that. It is non-stop action. See if we can get something, uh, something else to bite this thing. Just gonna pitch it right back up in there. So a lot of times all those fish are just kind of hanging down there in that same spot. So a lot of times it's just whatever one gets to it first wins. So I'm already feeling the little taps. Yep, something's got it. There we are. Let's see, now we have a, sna uh, a little, little snapper. Yeah, these are kind of rare in here. Cool fish. So hooked them right on the top. And again, a little small hook. This is a size one hook. If, you had a, if I had a size four or a size eight with those small chunks, it would be, it would be fish every cast like that. Those small fish, they do have a little bit harder time getting, uh, getting hooked because that hook just kind of barely fits in their mouth. So the smaller you go, the more quantity of fish you're going to catch, They're, the quality is going to go down. You're going to, that way again, because you're catching all those small things. The reason why I like this size one hook is because it's generally too big for small stuff like that to, to eat it. And I let those are the ones that are tapping. And then again, those small fish are up there tapping at it, tapping at it, tapping at it. A bigger fish will see the commotion and it'll swim down and go eat it. And that, it'll go thump it, right? It'll go grab it and now it's got it. So. Uh, for that reason, I like the size one. What I recommend doing is getting multiple sizes, right? Try to match it the size of the shrimp. I like the size one for like the, the three yacht, or sorry, the normal like three size, uh, three inch shrimp. And if I'm getting the big jumbo shrimp, I'll go up to a one knot. And then if it's all little small, little tiny shrimp, then I'll go down to two. And uh, for weights, this is a 3 16th ounce weight, right? This is for pretty, uh, pretty low current. And this is anywhere from like three to seven, eight feet of water. If, if the current goes up, then get stronger, or if it gets a lot deeper, you know, use a, use a heavier weight. And, uh, and then again, conversely, if you're fishing areas that it's, uh, there's really no tide at all, and it's maybe five feet deep, then you can even go down to, uh, to a quarter ounce. So just smart to have those, those various options there so you can customize your rig based on the conditions. All right, so here's a big shrimp, and, and when they're this big, I oftentimes go to a one-aught hook, but this should, should still work. So we'll go ahead and show you how it's done and pull it off. We're going to go through the meat. Rig it up. And then go into the belly. So this one, again, just the, the shank of the hook is just so thin where it, it will have to go out of the side. So you can see there, if you can bear, well, let me get it back to you. So if I, if you look a bit closely, this hook is basically up towards the side, you always want that hook point right near the edge of the shell. So that way I'm, I'm gonna have a, a little bit worse hookup ratio than I would with the bigger hook, but this still will work. So very, very important is to match the hook size to the shrimp. All right, this is, that, this is the big shrimp. Something's got it. I'm gonna let it have a little bit longer. Uh, I think it's a snapper. Oh, yeah, I just lost it. So yeah, that was, the, that was just a little bit too big of a shrimp for that rig. So just wanted to emphasize the importance of of matching the, the hook size. And so I'll put a little chart down below just to help out with that. But, uh, but yeah, long story short, this is a, a great way to go out there and catch a bunch of fish. We just went through about two dozen shrimp in a pretty quick time. Caught a lot of fish, caught a lot of species of fish. And we could have caught a lot, a lot more, right? If we had some kids out, would have gone to a smaller hook, just used small little chunks and, uh, and no telling how many fish would have caught. And most of them would have been pinfish and grunts, but it would have been a lot of fun and it would have been a lot of action. Um, using the bigger hooks will weed out the smaller ones, right? For, so if you want to go out and catch some keeper, keeper snapper or, uh, or some sheep's head, then you use a little bit bigger hook. Again, uh, like a size one is, is really what I use more often than not. That's for like the normal kind of three to four inch size shrimp. When you get those bigger shrimp, go up to a one knot. And then again, if you want to maximize your fish catching, you can just go down to a, to a smaller and smaller hooks. And the smaller you go, really the more fish you're going to catch just know that the quality will start going down. So that's it for now. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Love to hear your feedback. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the online fishing club that guarantees you'll be catching more saltwater fish than ever before while saving money on all the tackle you need. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon.